Hosting Friendsgiving this year? Need a last-minute gift for your Thanksgiving host? Just want to show someone how thankful you are? Do it all with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop around to get the lowest price all from your comfy couch. Can't make it home for the holiday? Send a drink instead. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Hello, I'm Petri Hoskin. And if you're listening to this show, then it's safe to say you'll love Hacks and Flax. Hacks and Flax is where you get the inside scoop on how journalist hacks and the flax of government and business work behind the scenes to decide which stories you'll be reading with your morning coffee and perhaps more importantly, how they keep certain headlines off the front pages. I'm assisted by a regular panel of hacks and flax who lift the lid on that special relationship between press and politics. So let hacks and flax blow your mind and change the way you look at news forever. But first, you heard it in the bulletin. It's an historic criminal case, a federal case against Donald Trump, the most senior figure to be tried under the, or face charges at least, under the, under the Espionage Act uh, in America. But I want to come at this from a slightly uh, oblique angle this evening with this thought, really. What lessons, what lessons, if any, can the, well, what, appear, what appeared on a day like today to be the extraordinary politics of America... What lessons, if any, can those politics in the US bring to our understanding of politics and politicians here in, in Britain? Is there any read across at all from what's happening and has been happening this, this afternoon in Miami to the way we do politics in the UK and the Western world more generally? Or is there something about America which, not for the first time, proves it is the exception to so many R- rules, really. There is, there is no doubt, if you've seen the pictures uh, today, that as a spectacle, as an end of the pier act, a circus, a rumpus, an unremitting exercise in showboating, what we have seen, and I was just watching the, the Trump jet taxiing and taking off from Miami. He's on his way to New Jersey. There'll be a speech there around about 1.15 in the early hours of this morning. I'm sure it'll be available here and elsewhere because there's a huge amount of interest. Uh, whether there should be, is another matter. But unquestionably, Donald Trump's appearance in court is mesmerising. He pleaded not guilty, if you're wondering, by the way, a couple of hours ago. Uh, about an hour ago, he stopped at a cafe. Uh, he addressed... He was sort of impromptu, in inverted commas. Dis- he addressed the cameras, described America as a country in decline, with proceeding against him that were rigged. He's already described the prosecutor in the case as a lunatic. A lunatic. In any other country, or many other countries, certainly, this would put a candidate beyond the pale, would it not? Not so the US. Donald Trump's ratings at the moment are booming. Let's turn to Simon Marks, LBC's Washington correspondent. Simon, welcome to you. What should we make of it all? Well, what a very carefully choreographed day by Donald Trump and his team, Colin. I mean, it has been mesmerising to watch. Uh, Let's first of all deal with the very, very serious legal jeopardy in which he finds himself, the former President of the United States, heading to the 13th floor of that federal courthouse in Miami. Uh, There was no mugshot taken of him, but he was digitally fingerprinted and... uh, Uh, formally booked on 37 counts relating to his alleged mishandling of classified documents, some of the nation's top secrets that were carted off in box loads to Mar-a-Lago when his presidency ended instead of being turned over to the National Archives, Uh, booked also on a charge of conspiracy to obstruct justice because, of course, the indictment alleges uh, that he tried to obstruct the FBI's investigation uh, into finding all of those documents and returning them to the National Archives. He was absolutely defiant uh, in the hours leading up to that court appearance uh, in a series of postings on his own social media platform, Truth Social, for the first time ever, suggesting that evidence had been planted against him in the case by the special prosecutor who has brought the charges, Jack Smith, whom the former president described as a thug and a radical leftist. Uh, And while his court appearance was underway, his lawyer Alina Haber emerged from the building uh, to talk to reporters describing him as defiant, that was obvious, uh, but also levelling fresh claims that the prosecution of Donald Trump is entirely politically motivated. The people in charge of this country do not love America. They hate Donald Trump. What we are witnessing today is the blatant and unapologetic 
weaponization of the criminal justice system. What is being done to the President Trump should terrify all citizens of this country. These are not the ideals that our democracy is founded upon. And this is not our America. Now, reporters who were in the room uh, while President Trump was undergoing this legal process, and remember there were no cameras permitted, no mobile phones, no live stream of any kind, uh, described him as being absolutely expressionless uh, during the roughly three-quarter of an hour uh, appearance. Uh, And indeed, he personally never entered a not guilty plea. It fell to uh, his lawyer, Todd Blanche, to enter a plea, uh, in Mr Blanche's words of most certainly not guilty. Uh, As soon as the court appearance was over, President Trump got back into his motorcade and snaked his way through the highways of Miami. We all thought going straight to the airport where Trump Force One was waiting waiting to whisk him back to his golf resort in New Jersey where he will be making a speech later uh, tonight. But in fact, he made a pit stop at a very familiar location uh, in Little Havana in Miami, the Versailles Bay It's the scene for every candidate for the nation's top office to campaign at uh, as they begin their presidential campaigns in the Sunshine State of Florida. There, uh, scores of Trump supporters were waiting for him. He walked into the room to cheers. He had a broad smile on his face. Uh, There was a brief moment of prayer with some uh, assembled religious leaders. Uh, Then President Trump posed for photographs and made his Former President Trump posed for photographs and made his first public comments since emerging from that courthouse where the not guilty plea had been entered. We love the people and you see where they are. You see the crowds and everything else. We have a country that is in decline like never before and we can't let it happen. I'm going to make a little uh, speech tonight in Bedminster and uh, I hope you're going to be there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. God bless Donald Trump with the shouts in the room there as he then got into the motorcade and headed to the airport. He's now on board his plane heading to New Jersey. But it was an amazing moment, that one, a made-for-TV moment designed clearly by Donald Trump to send a message in two directions. One, to the federal prosecutors bringing the indictment against him, that he retains substantial amounts of support in Miami and that they are going to find it pretty difficult to seat a jury Uh, that will uh, be able to set aside, in some cases, their support of President Donald Trump as they are required to adjudicate the case against him. But secondly, of course, Colin, he was sending a message to the other Republican aspirants for the presidential nomination uh, that he is still the runaway front runner and that defiant appearance surrounded by supporters there in Miami was as much designed to communicate to other Republicans Uh, not even to think of trying to topple him from the top spot in the race for the Republican Party's presidential nomination as it was designed to send a message to the Department of Justice here in Washington. I just, so, I mean, what's his likely defence going to be? Will it be, you know, sloppy filing? Will it be the fact that, <laughs> <laughs> that some of this... I mean, this, I mean we, we, we've got a general sense of what this documentation included. Um, sensitive documents, files about US military plans, nuclear program. I mean, it, it all sounds like the sort of thing that ought not to be uh, just boxed up in his in his bathroom or his ballroom. Um, but some of the documents can be dis- declassified. You may argue that some of them were. There's also this point, and this is where I imagine there is some, some play, that uh, he can claim that some of the documents were, quote, personal and protected by executive privilege. Yeah, and there's no question that some of the documents were personal. I mean, if you've seen the photograph uh, of uh, the box that uh, has sort of spilled over in one of those rooms at Mar-a-Lago, and you see uh, the trove of papers that are on the floor, well, most of them are just newspapers. I mean, mm-hmm. copies of the Financial Times and the Washington Post. I mean, nothing secret about that. But it is absolutely apparent from the indictment, if the indictment is to be believed, uh, that he uh, took with him to mar 
Mar-a-Lago, thousands of pages of top secret documents, many of them so secret that they were not to be shared with foreign governments, including the British government or other uh, members of the Five Eyes intelligence sharing uh, group that exists. Uh, these were highly sensitive documents that absolutely should not have been stacked in a bathroom at Mar-a-Lago or on the, uh, the stage of the ballroom there. Uh, so uh, he may seek to argue that he declassified them. I mean, he's previously said that as president, he could declassify a document merely by thinking that he had declassified <laughs> it. I mean, there is no evidence to support the view that that is uh, part of established process, but he may seek to advance that argument. More likely, I think, he's going to continue hammering away at the idea that this is a politically inspired prosecution coming at a time when uh, America is, uh, what, less than 18 months away from its next presidential election. He is absolutely the far and away front runner in the race for the Republican Party's nomination. And he will argue that there is an unequal application of the law here. Why has a special prosecutor brought these charges against him, but no charges have been brought against Joe Biden, uh, who also had top secret documents at his office in Washington, D.C., at his home in Delaware, and like Donald Trump was on the receiving end of a visitation by FBI agents at the home in Delaware in a bid to make sure that he didn't uh, retain documents, that he really had turned everything over to the authorities uh, that he had in his possession. I mean, the biggest problem for Donald Trump in all of this is the uh, the obstruction charge. Yeah. And the evidence that is contained in the indictment, based, it would seem, on audio and video recordings that something was afoot at Mar-a-Lago to mislead the FBI and to prevent them from getting their hands on documents that more rightly should have been in the hands of the Department of Justice. It, it, you know, as they always say in Washington, Colin, it's not the crime, it's the cover-up that does you in. The alleged cover-up. Simon, <laughs> Simon, thanks very much indeed. Simon Marks, LBC's Washington correspondent. Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Lease a 2023 Ford Escape Active for $397 per month for 48 months and 7,500 miles per year. First payment and $299 dock fee due at signing. Security deposit waived. Tax title license extra with approved credit. Expires 1204-2023.